All right, this is pre-calculus chapter 12, lesson four. We're on page 814. All right, to date, we have used matrices and we have either plugged them into our calculator and done RF, right? Or we've manually used Gauss-Jordan elimination techniques to get to reduce row echelon, right? And so we always use the coefficients and the constants to solve, right? Now, we're, this is a new way to solve, a new matrix operation on how we can solve an equation. All right, so there's something called the identity matrix. It almost, it, not almost, it looks like reduce row echelon without the constants is literally what it looks like. All of your identity matrices, which as you know is really matrices, um, will always be square because if I have, if I have two variables, I need two equations. If I have three variables, I need three equations. So all of your identity matrices are going to be square. So if I have two equations, two variables, the identity matrix looks like this. If I have three equations, three variables, and so what is the identity matrix? The identity matrix says, if I take an original set of, of system of equations and multiply it by the identity matrix, I get the same thing, identical values, all right? So if I had, um, where did I write that down? Okay, I'm just gonna make one up. Say if I had two X plus three Y equals a number, any number, and then I had 4x minus y equals a number. All right, the matrix for that would be <coughs> 2, 3, 4, negative 1, right? If I multiply these equations, so this would be a square matrix by its identity matrix, I'm going to end up with that same matrix because here is row one times column one, right? Row one times column one. All right, so that's two times one plus three times zero. So that's two, got it? Two times one, three times zero. Right, but I'm just making sure you remember how to multiply. Everybody with me? Okay, this is row one, column two. So row one, column two. So it's two times zero, three times one. All right, this is row two, column one. Row two, if you have to write it, row two, column one. Sometimes I have to write it. Row two times column one. Four. All right, row two, column two, row two, column two. So anytime we, we take the original matrix and multiply it by the identity matrix, we get the original numbers, all right? So you're not changing the value. All right, so what if I took this matrix and multiplied it by my variables? All right, can I multiply these? This is a two by two, right? This is a two by two, and this is a... Two by one. So what am I gonna end up with? Two by one. A two by one. All right, so this would be row one times column one, right? Row one, column one. Two X plus three Y. So that's only one term. That's what I get. Right, I get the equations, right? I get the equations. Um, and this is row two, column one, row two, column one, four X. So the X, Y is the 
So I end up with the system of equations, right? How does that change for larger equations? Well, I would just have a three by three and I'd have X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. right? I have a four by four X, Y, Z, W, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna keep this, I'm gonna keep this example going, all right? <laughs> So I can take the coefficients, right? We're gonna call these A. We're gonna label that matrix A. The coefficients times the variables. And if I went ahead and wrote what these are equal to, we'll just say five and four. I could label that matrix B, right? Because when I multiplied this, I just got the equations, right? Mm -hmm. So the equations equal that. Does that make sense so far? Got it so far? <coughs> All right. Now, <clears throat> go ahead. You want me to make something three? The what? Four three. I, I, it, yeah, sure. I just made the numbers up. Yeah, actually, it doesn't matter. So never mind. You want me to change this four to a three? Yes. I'm good. I'm not going to solve this one. Well, we could. <clears throat> but that's not the point of this example. All right. Now, do you remember when we did inverse functions? Mm -hmm. And so our original function was f of x, but our inverse, okay, let's think of something else. Inverse functions. We just finished a bunch of this. Trig. Okay, everybody look, everybody look. The sine of theta is one half. All right, how did we, what did we do when we did the inverse? Over the sine of one half equals theta. What were we doing? The opposite. Swapping the x and the y. Swapping the x and the y. And, and what happened when we did the inverse? It was to the negative one? But that really doesn't mean I'm raising it to the negative first power, right? That's just a symbol saying it's the inverse, right? Well, we can use inverse operations here to solve. Okay, most of it's gonna be done in your calculator. I'm gonna show you how to do it manually, however. Okay? All right, but I wanna work right here. In a system of equations, what do we wanna solve for? We wanna solve for the value of this matrix. Got it? This is what we wanna solve for. So can I somehow do something here so that I have X equals some matrix? And yes, we can. All right, so you're watching. If I take the inverse, and by algebra, as long as I multiply on both sides, I don't change the value of the equality, right? I can multiply both sides of an equation by the same value as and that does not change the value, right? You agree? Yes. Yes. All right, so now. Wait. Everybody with me so far? So this represents the inverse of the matrix where we've swapped the X's and the Y's. Got it? All right. Now, what's the value of this? Multiplication is? What's negative one plus one? What's a to the zero power? One. one. Actually, the identity matrix. All right, so this is just x equals b times the inverse. This will always be a square matrix. <coughs> matrix. <laughs> if I could spell 
This gives me the identity matrix. The identity matrix is like saying multiplying everything by one. Mm -hmm. Got it? So A to the negative one times the inverse of A times A always gives me the identity matrix. All right, so here we have two formulas. I can solve an equation by taking the constants and multiplying them by the inverse. I also can say that the inverse of a matrix times the original matrix will always equal the identity matrix. So two equations that I can get from what I just showed you. Yes, ma'am. This is the identity matrix. So it will always be squared. It depends on how many variables you have, right? Yes. So you're basically multiplying like the first matrix, the two, three, four, negative one, by like three, two, negative one. Does that make sense? We're swapping our X's and Y's. So it's a little different with matrices. But I, that's just what it equals. We just know it's the identity matrix. I'm gonna show you how to get this. You can actually put this and your calculator and plug in the matrix and raise it to the negative first power and you get the identity matrix. Okay, but I'm gonna show you how to do it, all right? But I needed you to understand this first, yes? There's not an identity matrix for like, if it was three by two or something like that, correct? Yes, they're squares. all square, correct. Okay. A three by two is not solvable. You're gonna have infinite solutions because a three by two would only have an X and a Y. A three by two would be something like this and then that would be a three by two. You only need two equations, two variables. What about a two by two? Uh, unsolvable, a two by three. Okay. If I have three variables, so they're always going to be square. Got it? Always square. And what does the square represent? The square represents just the coefficients, not the constants. Got it? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so look at, I already jumped to example two. Well, I actually worked at one like example one. Everybody look at this. They took the coefficients, multiplied it by X, Y, Z, and got the original equations. Do you see that? Everybody see that in example one. They multiplied the coefficients by the variables, matrix, and the end result was the original equations there up towards the top of the page. Make sense? All right, I've worked one like example two. So the word I always indicates the identity matrix. I always indicates the identity matrix, all right? Yes, that's just telling you what it, it's just in. Um, look at the box in the middle of page 815. For any n by n, see that has to be a square matrix, right? So if it's n would be a two by two or n would be a three by three, right? So yes, that I sub two indicates it's a two by two. So if you take, now, now, remember the commutative property doesn't always work for multiplication, does it? Of matrices. The commutative property does not always work with every matrix. It always works with the identity matrix. Always. Um, so I could take this equation, I mean, yeah, that's, they are equations. 
I could take that matrix, which we did a minute ago, I believe, multiply it by one, zero, zero, one, and get that. Or I could, I could commute them. One, zero, zero, one, times two, three, four, negative one is going to give me the same result. This is the only time when the commutative property works is when we have two square matrices. It works, but not always when we don't have two square matrices. Does that make sense? All right. Now, how do we get, um, how do we get the inverse and how do we verify that one is the inverse of the other? All right. This is how we're going to verify if one is the inverse of another. We're going to multiply them, see if we get the identity. Got it? All right, so that's example three. Can we know that A and B are inverse functions? This is what we're going to use to determine inverse right here. Got it? This is what we're going to use to solve for the variables. All right. You see how this differs from the previous lesson? It's a different way to, to solve. We're going to get there for uh, variables. All right, so I can determine that they are inverses if A times B gives me an identity matrix that's a two by two. All right, so I'm gonna write these, then I'll put the iPad down and we'll multiply them. All right, so I should get one, zero, zero, one. I'm verifying. Okay. I'm verifying if they are inverses. If I end up with the identity matrix, they are inverses. And it looks like they are. It doesn't matter. A, B should give me the same as B, A. Because we have two square matrices. All right. This is row one, column one. Row one, column one. Let's do the math together. Two times negative one. Negative two. Negative two plus three is one. Three is one. Got it? Negative two plus three is one. Everybody see that? Negative two plus three is one. Everybody see that? All right, this is row one, column two. Row one, column two. Row one, column two. All right, <clears throat> this is two times one. Two. One times negative two. Negative two. Two minus two, zero. So far, so good, right? All right, this is row two, two, column one. <clears throat> I, know, I have to write it down, or I just, I, I just have to tell my brain many times. Row two, column one, got it? We're expecting a zero here. Three times negative one? Negative three, negative three plus three? Zero. zero. It's gotta work. All right, this is row two, column two, row, row two, column two. Three minus two, one, those are inverses. So you just have to do A times B, you don't have to do B times A. That's it, to verify that they are inverse functions, inverse matrices. Got it? And you can see where they did BA. They did B times A and you still get the identity. And will that ever change? Like will you ever multiply A times B and it gets the identity? And, and it gets what? Change. No. It won't change. So you tend If you get it one way, you're gonna get it both ways. Okay. Cool. Yes. Okay, so then how do we find the inverse? Okay, I'm not gonna teach you the way the textbook does. Got it? I'm gonna teach you a different way that I learned a, a long time ago, all right? 
Maybe this is what the textbook is trying to do, but I think the textbook is rather confusing. So I like my way better. And it's not really my way though, you know. All right. <clears throat> All right, so it says in example four, find the inverse. So you write the matrix you have. And then I do a lot of little dotted line and I write the identity. And then we use like Gauss Jordan to be able to make this side the identity. So I want one, zero, zero, one here. When I make this the identity, then this becomes my inverse. All right, so remember we work here first. So we wanna make that a one. So divide every term by two. two. So row one divided by two. We're not changing row two. So that's one, three, one, half, zero, one, four, zero, one. All right, I wanna make Remember, I'm going to stay in this first column. I want to make that zero. I'm going to multiply this first row by negative one and add it to this row. So negative one times row one, and I'm going to add it to row two. I'm not changing row one. All right, so negative, that's zero. Negative, that's one. Oh, that's really nice. Negative, that's negative one half, that's nothing. Now, I have a one here, that's what I'd want. I want to make that zero. So I'm going to multiply this row by negative three and add it to row one. So negative three times row two and add it to row one and then I'll be done. And right, I'm not changing the second row. I'm just changing the first. Okay, nothing changes here. Negative three plus three is zero. All right, I have to write this out. Negative three times one half, and we're gonna add it to one half. Negative three halves plus one half is negative two halves which is negative one. All right, negative three. Wait, I'm sorry, wasn't that a negative one half? So that would be a positive it's a negative. three over two. That is correct. So that's positive three over two, positive four over two. Positive two. Positive two. Thank you for correcting me before we get any further because that would be crazy, right? All right, let me make sure I'm right so far. So far we're good, okay. Now, negative three times one, negative, negative three, three plus zero. Three. This is the inverse. All right, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, you write the identity to the right of it and you're swapping and making the first set the identity. Let me get where I, oh wait, no, that's it. All right, and that is the answer on that example. Do you want these checked? Okay, how could we check it? Huh? I could take this times this, and I better get that, right? This is A, that's the identity. If I multiply A times the inverse, I should get the identity. So you can verify it. Make sense? All right, got it? All right, so that's all with that equation. A times the identity times the inverse equals the identity.
right? The original times the inverse equals the identity. Got it? Okay, why do we need the inverse? For the next concept. Because the inverse times the solutions are the, the number on the other side, not really the solutions, the number, the constant in the equation is going to give me the solutions to the X and the Y. If I take the inverse and multiply it by the constants in the equation, I'm going to get the solutions. That's that other equation that I gave you. All right, so look at example five. We have these two equations, x plus y equals two, and we have two x minus nine y equals 15. All right, this represents my b in here. This, those two and the 15 represent my B matrix. My inverse will be represented by the inverse of this. All right, so we can do the inverse. That's just the same thing. It's the same example. thing. All right, so we're going to do the inverse. We're going to figure out what is the inverse. And then we'll verify it in our calculator, just so you've done it at least once in your calculator. All right, so we have a 1, 1, a 2, a negative 9, and we want it to be a 1, 0, 0, 1. I want to make that side look like this side. This side becomes my inverse. We are going to have fractions here, but it's okay. All right, it's okay. All right, so I this is 1, hip, hip, hooray. We want to make that 0. <laughs> negative 2 times row 1 and add it to row 2. I'm not doing anything to row 1. I texted myself to bring markers and ignored my own text. Of course. <laughs> All right, negative 2, that's 0. All right, that's negative 2. Negative 2 and negative 9 is... All right, negative two and zero, zero, that stays one. Okay, now, we want this to be one. Well, if I multiply it by 12, then I'm going to change this. Multiply by negative or 11. No. Divide by negative 11. Row two divided by negative 11. Here's where we're going to have our fractions. Wait, we could actually do positive 11 because then it would be negative and it would cancel out. But I want a positive one here. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have a positive one here. Right? Okay. Not changing row one, but we're going to. They're all going to be fractions. All right, so zero. That becomes one. That becomes two elevenths. That's negative one eleventh. Okay, now I want a zero here. It's positive one. Oh, so it was a negative one. Row two from row one. Wait, it, it is positive, right? Is it positive? Yes. I yes, know. yes, because that's the original identity. Mm -hmm. I'm going back making sure. Multiply the bottom one by negative one. Right, row two by negative one and add it to row one. So negative one times row two, I'm adding it to row one. I'm not changing the second row. The one doesn't change, that becomes zero. Okay, this is negative two elevenths plus one. Nine which is positive nine elevenths, because this is 11 over 11. Mm -hmm. So this is positive nine elevenths. Okay, now this is the opposite of negative one eleventh, which is one eleventh and zero, so this is one eleventh. All right, here's my inverse. Here is my inverse. Okay, if I take the inverse, multiply it by the B, I'm gonna get the solutions for X and Y. All right, so I'm gonna do some erasing. 
and write the inverse right here. Nine elevenths, one eleventh, two elevenths, negative one eleventh. Multiply it by B, which is two and 15. I'm going to get X, Y. It's going to be a two by one. Did you already know that? Because this is a two by two. This is a two by one. The result is a two by one. Okay. Here, row one, column one. Row one, column one. So this is nine elevenths times two plus one eleventh times 15. You see? Mm -hmm. All right. This is going to be row two, column one. So this is two elevenths times two plus negative one eleventh times 15. That's a two by one. All right, so now we just have to do the math. And in your calculators, you can change to fractions. All right, so that this is gonna be 18 elevenths plus 15 elevenths, 33 over 11, which is three. 33 over 11, which is three. Okay, this is four elevenths minus 15 elevenths. Negative 11 elevenths, negative one. So X equals three, Y equals negative one. Okay, so how do you know? Oh wait, okay, yeah, I kind of got Got it? Mm -hmm. So when you have the two by one, then the X is on top of the Y at the bottom. Whereas when you're writing the previous formula, it was X is on top, this is X, Y. Well, remember, okay, remember when we wrote, this was one, one, two, negative nine, times X, Y equals oh, yeah, two, yeah, so. 15. It's the X, Y. Okay. Okay. Let's just do this. If, the, if I multiply both sides by nine elevenths, two elevenths, one eleventh, negative one eleventh, I could do that, can't I? Okay, this is the original, right? This is the X. What does this represent? I, I, inverse. inverse. What is this going to equal? The identity. Or one. Or one, right? So what did we do? This is what we did right here. We took the inverse times B, and we got this. There's really not, not, not it's not a fraction. <laughs> it's really just X and Y. That's what we got, three, negative one, wasn't it? Make sense? All right, now, uh, we're going to do a three by three. However, I'm going to have you find the inverse in your calculator. All right? We could do the inverse. I actually worked it and did got the inverse, but, but you don't have to. Maybe on your test I'll say algebraically find the inverse. But we're going to use the inverse to solve. <coughs> All right, so let's just write the augmented matrix. What's the augmented matrix? For example, uh, For example six. One. The square. Two. No, just the square. One, one, one. Two, three, 
two, three, zero. One, two, I just want the square. Augmented just says write the coefficients. Okay. Got it? All right. So put this in your calculator. Two, five, negative one. Put this in A, put this in B. Just so you have it. This is a three by one. Three by one. This is a three by three. Well, that one was easy, right? They're both three. It's rows by columns. Opposite, it's uh, descending alphabetically. And then you want us to do that part. Okay, does everybody have A in here? Yes. Okay, so clear out. Then I want you to go to matrix and just choose A, and it should pop in on your math screen. Raise it to the negative one and hit enter. Okay, do you have decimals? Yes. Okay, time out. I want you to hit, everybody listen. Hit mode. Go down to the second screen. Mode. Go down to the second screen. And you see the word answers? Go over to fraction. Hit enter and clear out. Okay. It's still decimals. No, no, no. This is what you're going to do. You're going to go back up and highlight A to the negative 1 and hit enter and hit enter again. What? All right. Okay, that's crazy. I'll go look at that. I have, if I go can you just do math? Right. Uh, you may have to go to math something. All right, anyway, let's keep moving. We're videoing. Let's keep moving. Tell me what the identity, the um, inverse is. All right, is this what you got for the inverse? Yeah. Okay. And everybody put B in. Yes. Okay. Is everybody with me? Do you have this as your most recent answer in your calculator? Yes. This yes. one. Yes. Hit times and go in and choose B. And hit enter, enter. That's what X equals Y. Z. 